Hey everyone, it's Robert Weinberg, your mortgage advisor and financial coach. It can be really frustrating when you're trying to get a mortgage, just looking at the amount of paperwork that's being requested and required of you. So I wanted to take a minute and just share some information about the reasons why so much paperwork's required and what you can do about it to combat it and uh, make the mortgage process easier. So going back to the financial crisis and before the financial crisis, there wasn't as much paperwork required to get a mortgage. There were actually certain types of mortgages that you didn't even have to verify or validate your income at all. And what happened was that created these uh, circumstances where a lot of people went into foreclosure and obviously the housing and financial crisis that happened around 2007, 2008. So what, what ended up occurring is the banks went to the other side, the pendulum swung, so to speak, to the other side to where when banks did start lending again, they got really picky about who they were lending to and very, very uh, tedious documentation was required. So now they make you really prove that you're absolutely capable of paying that mortgage back by validating your income, your assets, your credit, any and everything that you could ask for, they are asking for, and even some things that may not make sense to you. But I assure you, there's reasons and there are guidelines behind it. So that's the reasons really why. And the, and the second uh, reason is because the banks don't want to own your home. See, banks are in the business of lending money. They're not in the business of owning real estate and buying and selling properties. And what ended up happening with the financial crisis is that banks ended up owning a lot of real estate. They don't want to be landlords. They don't want to do that. So because they don't want to do that, they're being extra tedious on the front end to make sure that people are getting mortgages are well qualified to get those mortgages. So that's really the why behind it. Now, what can you do about it? The main thing that you can do as a consumer, as a home buyer, as a homeowner is you can work with a lender that's on the cutting edge of technology. Work with a lender that's using innovation within technology to make the mortgage process easier. And here's some examples of that. First of all, nowadays with the advent of technology, there are a lot of tools that can be used that I'll talk about here that as a home buyer or someone refinancing your property, you can use if you're aligned with the right lender to make the mortgage process even easier than it may have been many years ago if you got a loan. What that entails is electronic disclosures. So no matter what type of loan you're doing, you're gonna have to sign an application and disclosures. You can now do that electronically using services like DocuSign or EchoSign that allow you to electronically sign those documents. So you don't even have to print them most of the time. You can just sign them electronically on your phone or your computer. So that takes a huge stack of paperwork out of the process by making that done electronically. The next thing is uh, you'll wanna have a lender that utilizes automated employment and, and uh, asset verification. So the employment verification will not always work if you work for a small mom and pop company or a company that doesn't participate in the electronic verification system. Most companies use, it's called the work number, theworknumber.com. So that allows lenders to validate almost instantaneously what your income is, how long you've been at your job, that sort of thing but it's typically right now only gonna be your top tier companies, Fortune 500 or very large companies that subscribe to that service. But if you do uh, have a company that you're working for that does do that, then you're in a position where you may not even need to provide any pay stubs whatsoever. There's a day one certainty program that allows the lender to use that verification in lieu of pay stubs, in lieu of a W-2, so they can validate all that electronically through this service. Uh, and it can really cut down on the income verifications that you have. And then from an asset standpoint, which is the money that you'll need in the bank or for closing and whatnot, that can be uh, electronically verified as well. Most banks are able to be electronically verified. The service that I use for it with my clients is called Account Check. And what that allows you to do is you'll get a secure link in your email. You can log on to your bank's website using your username and password. I would say 90 plus percent of the banks or credit unions in the US are on this service and it will actually allow you to have your bank transactions and your history and balances imported directly into the underwriting system that your lender utilizes. That means that you don't have to provide bank statements. You don't have to provide deposit verification forms, um, canceled checks, things of that nature. A lot of that can be done through this automated asset verification, which again, the service I use is called Account Check. There are some others that are available as, as well. The other thing is that if your lender is utilizing a loan through Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, 
you may be qualified for what's called a PIW or a property inspection waiver. This can be used instead of an appraisal. Now it's not always available. It's only about 10 to 15% of the time, but if it is available, it'll save you money because you don't need an appraisal at all on the property. And it'll give an instantaneous um, okay or uh, validation of the property value of the home that you're refinancing or purchasing. So again, this is something that your mortgage lender or advisor can find on their underwriting findings to see if your loan is eligible for a property inspection waiver, and it can cut down on the paperwork as well as save you between $350 and $600, depending on the type of property that you're financing. And lastly here is you're, you want your lender to use a borrower portal. There's a few different ones. This is a portal that will allow you to organize documents. If they do need any certain documents through the process, it will track that in this portal. You can communicate with your lender on there. And also they can keep you up to date on the status of your loan by using this borrower portal. The um, portal that I use with my company is called Flowify. There are some other portals as well. Uh, the other one that I know is very popular is called Maxwell. And again, these are great portals that you can use to track your loan through the process as well as keep your documentation organized. So hopefully this has given you some great insight on why the paperwork's required to get a mortgage and what you can do about it. So in a nutshell, you wanna make sure up front that the mortgage advisor or lender you're working with utilizes these different tools I'm talking about in technology to help cut down on that paperwork through the process. If this has been of value to you, please like, share, comment on this post, subscribe to my YouTube or Instagram channels. And if you would like a consultation for either a pre-approval to buy a home or refinancing of your property, feel free to reach out to me directly via social media or call or text my office directly. Hope this helps and we'll talk to you soon.